increasingly as a filmmaker, it really does matter that the films matter. Uh, so um, incre I think initially I was just like, I just want to work and film wildlife because that's what I want to do. And of course, that's still what I want to do. I want to film in the natural world. But I... Wouldn't it be great to make a difference? Wouldn't it be great to inspire people? That would be, that would be an amazing outcome. When I was in my late teens, I was working and living in Tanzania and I met a BBC film crew who were passing through and it was that amazing sort of light bulb moment where I was, oh, you can do that as a job. It never occurred to me not to be a wildlife camera woman. I know how to frame stuff, it's instinctive, it just comes into the frame and I know when it's right and I know when it works and I get very happy. <laughs> A great friend of mine, Richard Moss, an incredibly talented uh, artist and filmmaker, uh, he says beauty is the sharpest tool of the box and I totally agree with him because I think you can make your point as long as you're telling a story and it's not gratuitous, you can make people really feel. Nature does what nature does and we're not there to intervene, we're there to record it truthfully and not have any impact on it, which is why, again, I think I like being a long lens camera woman because you're removed, um, you, you're observing, you're not, you know that you're not influencing the behaviour in any way, and I really like that. I've seen some heartbreaking, heartbreaking things. I've seen a cheetah mother being tossed by a Grant's gazelle. Um, she died. Uh, two days later, her three cubs died. Um, I couldn't intervene. I told the scientists about it because that's their, their job, right? My job is not there to, to get involved. My job is to record it faithfully. Pretty much every wildlife shoot has exactly the same constraints, which is there will be a moment that you have to cover and it's not enough to have one lens. You have to have a zoom, an ultra zoom that will get you um, the different ranges of shot size because it's no good just having a mid shot. It's not gonna carry it. So you need that big detail. You need the eyes, the pores, whatever it might be. But you also need that big wide. We want an ultra zoom that's fast, that holds focus, that's pin sharp to the edges and that um, allows you to really get in close when you're far away because the whole, the whole business of nature filmmaking is you're usually far away because you don't want to, you know, influence anything that's going on. We pretty much all use different cameras, but we all used the same glass because Canon are the only people who make an ultra zoom for wildlife that, that does enough. The CN20 is a beast. It's amazing. I remember laying my hands on it for the first time and it's, it's incredible because it's got 180 rotation. If you're pulling focus, <laughs> you've got a cheetah running, you really have to move that barrel. I know that when Canon were developing the um, 50 to 1000, they definitely spoke to wildlife people because it is a lens that is used almost exclusively. And it's, I will take a um, 17 to 120 um, with me on a shoot. It'll come out of the box maybe twice but I will be almost exclusively on that 50 to 1,500, well, it goes to 1,500, because that's the one, it's the workhorse. It's the one that lets me get the sequence. The only advantage men have over us is that we, they can grow beards in the cold. Um, uh, it, I, I'm glib about it, it's very serious. There needs to be more women doing what I do. I think the more they see people like me doing it, the more normal it will become.